Powder coating is easy. To prove that, I'm going to build my very own setup and start painting the steel plates kit for my CNC machine in Dimu instead of outsourcing it. Dealing with all the companies that didn't match my quality standards wasn't easy anyway, so let's do it on my own. This will be a deep dive into how you can powder coat on your own, starting with an explanation of what it is, the equipment that you will need, some safety information, and then it will get very DIY with building my very own powder coating booth 3D printing a box fan and at the end I will take you through my painting process. For some of you that do not know what powder coating is, it's a special painting process where you use dry powder applied to the parts with a tool, a powder coating gun, and then after that you put the parts in the oven for about 10 to 20 minutes at a temperature of about 180 degrees Celsius and after cooling down the parts are ready. Unlike in the conventional painting process, it is much quicker, you don't need to wait for the paint to dry and it results in harder and tougher finish. If that sounds like investing in plenty of expensive tools, no worries, it's not that bad. You will need an air compressor, the bigger the better, but really any even basic model will do. Mine is pretty old, but still works fine. We'll need an oven, but don't worry, you don't need anything special and fancy for powder coating. You can literally use your old kitchen oven and that's in fact what I have been using and it worked very well for me. So any kind of oven will do, but please make sure that you don't do that in an oven that you have in the kitchen and you use to make food. You really don't want to put the powder coating stuff inside your oven that is meant to cook food. So definitely use like an old oven that is not used for food anymore. Keep in mind that dimensions of the oven will determine the max dimensions of the object that you can paint because it has to fit inside the oven. Powder coating booth is also essential, but we'll talk about that in a moment. The powder coating gun. There is plenty of expensive options meant for the industry and just a few budget-friendly options. So I found one that was pretty inexpensive, I decided to give it a try and it surprisingly worked really well for me. I have been using it for over a year so far and because it worked so well, I ordered some more and now you can place an order at industry.cc slash store and buy your very own powder coating gun directly from me and support my work that way. There are also additional empty containers, which are very useful if you want to paint multiple colors. I have been using the very same powder coating gun since I started to do it. I have never faced a single problem. It's easy to clean and also very durable. There are two different versions with US and EU plaque. It's a tribo type powder coating gun, so it needs to be grounded. That's why the plaque has plastic pins. It's just about the grounding. Of course, we need powder paint, no worries, it's nothing fancy, it's not super expensive, you can even find something on Amazon, but it's a bit overpriced, so I would recommend finding something locally. Also make sure that your powder works with your type of the powder coating gun. There are two different types of powder coating gun, Corona and Tribo, I have been using the second one, it uses Teflon inserts to charge the particles and the part is grounded and that way the particles, the paint is attracted to the part. That's how it works. It's very simple. There is not a lot of complex parts inside. There's really nothing that can break. The other type is Corona and it's usually used in the industry more often because it requires really high voltage, like kilovolts, in order to attract the particles to the part. It is sometimes a little bit more efficient, but because of this complexity, I wouldn't recommend it for a maker. Few words about safety because it is very important right here. The powder paint is composed of very super tiny particles, particles that you definitely don't want to inhale or get in your eyes. This stuff is dangerous, so always do wear a proper mask and eye protection and like use proper filter. Let's do a little break there. I'm editing the video and I found some other YouTube videos about DIY powder coating and most of the people there don't really seem to care that much about safety and that made me wondering, is powder coating really that harmful? So I found some articles and most of them say that powder coating is way less harmful than standard spray painting because the paint is not that toxic. But still, it's little particles that can get into your lungs and you definitely don't want that. So like the bare minimum is high quality mask. Most of the people on YouTube will use like very crappy cheap mask. I do not recommend that. Like high quality mask is very, very important in my opinion. You should get it. It's not really that expensive. The one I'm using from 3M is probably like 20 something, $40, something like this. It's not really that much. And you will also use it in your other projects and in your other workshop stuff activities that you are doing. 
Uh, don't be afraid of powder coating. It is not as scary as it may sound. Uh, with a proper mask and some filtering ventilation, you will be fine, especially if you are doing it from time to time in just a few parts. So don't be afraid, but remember, safety is important. But in fact, even when you cut wood, like on a table saw, you should also wear a mask because there is plenty of little particles of wood floating in the air and you definitely don't want to get that stuff in your lungs too. If you are a maker and you enjoy making stuff, take care about your health so that you can make more stuff in your life. It's as simple as that. And now I will show you how I built my very own powder coating booth, but first let's start with the first one. Because it was built out of pallet wood and that was a very quick build with plenty of flaws and that's why I decided to build a new one and much better one, hopefully. I started with renovating the whole room, painting all the walls white and floor yellow as well. The booth, I hope my pronunciation is correct, was designed in Fusion 360. To make the building process easier, I also made blueprints with all the dimensions and you can download it for free on my website, link is in the description. As building material, I used MDF mostly to reduce cost, but if you have access to cheap plywood, definitely go with plywood. Cutting all the dimensions to the right size was obviously really easy with all the drawings and dimensions. I recommend to print the blueprint because it's much easier to work with it that way. And now we get to the most complicated part of this powder coating booth and that is the filtering system. In United States, box fans are very popular and often people use box fans in the powder coating booth setup. Unfortunately, in Europe, these are not really that popular. Actually, in Poland, it's impossible to buy a box fan, so I had to be a little bit more creative here. That is something that I have been working on for quite some time and went through a few iterations to make it better. And the same design of the fan will be used on the wind tunnel that I am working on at the science club at my university. It's a 3D printed case and a 3D printed fan plus a popular BLDC motor. And just like that you have a box fan that is available all around the world assuming you have an access to a 3D printer. A 3D printer and of course a soldering iron because there was plenty of cables to solder to the BLDC motors and then to wire everything to the power supply. Three of these fans were set up next to each other and that hopefully will be enough to properly filter everything. And here I used one of the projects I built this year, a mini metal brake. And that was just such a really, really fun thing to use because instead of 3D printing something that would take like two hours, a holder for a power supply, I just bent it in like two minutes and it worked perfectly. Maybe even better than the 3D print is definitely stronger because it's metal and it was super easy to do. Fans were great and I wanted to use this filtering cloth as a filtering material, it didn't work at all, I do not recommend it, because after the tests I saw that the paint actually went through the filters and here I'm drilling a small hole because to that I will attach my 3D printed carousel. There were also some 3D printed parts involved in this build to make the carousel that I built to rotate the parts around when I'm painting them. I used a bearing to rotate the parts but also to make electrical connection between the part and the alligator clip from the powder coating gun. Some additional wooden sticks made a perfect handle to easily paint the part all around. To get nice results when you are painting, light is very crucial. You need to see what you are actually painting. Fortunately, a simple LED strip will do. I used the one that is water resistant is covered in this kind of, I don't know, it's probably silicone, just so that it's easier to clean and last longer because the paint won't mess up the LEDs. And with a simple plastic bracket, it was attached to the booth. So that is the complete powder coating booth of my design. I think the size is just about right for my needs and I'm really happy with the rotating system, the lights and the filtering system is like, it's very interesting, but it's just not perfect yet. I need to work a little bit on the filters and improve that part, also it's a bit loud. Uh, I should also probably say that I, I won't work on this part because I moved out of my workshop recently, someone broke inside, nothing was stolen, there is a video about it if you want to watch it. 
Uh, but I move out of the workshop, so I don't have an access to like a place where I could powder coat stuff anymore. I decided to make this video anyway. The powder coating booth wasn't finished as exactly as I wanted it to, and like there's plenty of upgrades that I wanted to add. I'm not able to do this at this point, but I have my drawings, I have my design of the powder coating booth. So if in the future I have a new place that also where I can powder coat, I will just rebuild the powder coating booth, improve it and share that here on the channel. So subscribe to so don't miss it. And now let's talk about my process of powder coating. Start by filling in the plastic container with the powder paint and then screw the plastic container into the powder coating gun. If you use a different system it might look slightly differently, but in general it's pretty much the same. Then attach your air compressor and set the air pressure to like a very low value, just slightly more than one bar, you really don't need a lot. Here is a trick I sometimes use and that is to preheat the part before painting it because it is much easier to paint it that way. You don't need to do that, powder will actually stick to the part because it is electrostatically charged. But actually when you preheat it, it sticks much easier and it is a bit quicker to do and when you do a lot of parts it is kind of important. And then you spray a thin layer of powder on the whole part, rotating the part and making sure that it's all over the place. I forgot to say that you actually have to clean the part and I usually just sand them a little bit and then clean with a paper towel and that works really well. And after painting you put the part again in the oven set to like 180 degrees celsius for around 10 to 20 minutes that depends on the part. And after that time and of course cooling down the part is ready. It is just so so much quicker than conventional painting. And I would even say that it's easier because if you do a mistake if your part is not preheated you can just easily blow off the powder and start again, so it is pretty easy, fun and not as hard as you may think. So here I'm painting some parts for my mini metal break that you might saw in some of my previous videos. That was a really nice project, really nice painting job, as you will see in a moment, it looked great here. The parts are cooling down on this kind of little cooling system I built out of really crappy parts that I had laying around. And here is my mini metal break with some really really decent painting job and that was easy to do and here I am machining a piece of aluminum for one of my projects that maybe I will show you in one of my future videos and this piece of aluminum was painted black but firstly it was bent on the mini metal brake. I had some problems with bending because it was 3mm thick aluminum quite thick and here it is after bending and before painting and here I just simply painted the part black and you will see a result in a moment. It was easy to paint even though I wasn't sure if aluminum will work but it did and the part is pretty strong and as you can see the result, the finish, the smoothness of the powder coat is just so perfect. 